Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. In a surprise announcement on Monday, it was revealed that Energy Minister Tina Jumat Peterson had signed a nuclear power cooperation agreement with Russian firm Rosatom on the sidelines of an international atomic energy agency conference in Vienna, Austria. Terence Kremer gives us more insight into what this means for South Africa. Hi, Terence. Hi. So what is the actual agreement between South Africa and Rosatom entail? And does this mean that the Russians will definitely be building nuclear power stations in South Africa? Well, it's really a framework agreement. And I think what happened was the press release that was jointly issued by Rosatom and uh, the DOE caused a lot of confusion because it's not a deal or a contract where Russia is going to be imminently building uh, nuclear power stations in South Africa, but rather a series of uh, areas or areas of components that uh, South Africa and Russia will enter into cooperation around, which is really a precursor to a possible uh, nuclear bidding process, which has been on the cards for some time now. As we know, um, South Africa is committed to keeping in a, a nuclear in its energy mix. And this agreement really is a precursor to a possible um, tender that's going to be issued and uh, covering, we don't know how many megawatts, but in the press release it said 9,600 megawatts, which is what's covered in the RP or the Integrated Resource Plan. And that would involve a, a massive procurement process, probably the biggest South Africa's ever seen. And what role does nuclear energy play in South Africa's energy mix? Well, at the moment we have one nuclear uh, power station, two reactors down in the Western Cape at Kuburg. And that's been in our system for 30 years now, so it plays its part in keeping the lights on in South Africa. It's been a, a, a very reliable source of power. There are times, and I think at the moment there, there's a, a refueling of the power station and when units do go down, and uh, that, that means that more uh, coal-fired um, coal uh, generation capacity needs to be transferred uh, from uh, Mpumalanga down to the Western Cape. And we also have to rely more and more on the diesel plants um, in the, o the open cycle and gas turbines, which are down in the Western Cape during those periods. But on the whole, the Kuburg reactor has been an important part of South Africa's uh, energy supply system. As I say, it's been operating for 30 years reliably. And at the moment, if in the Eskom uh, fleet, Kuburg is said to be probably producing the cheapest electricity um, in the entire fleet of, uh, of the utility. And um, uh, there, are, there was this recent um, plan for uh, the, the uh, upgrade of, of the nuclear reactor and uh, Arriva, which is the French um, vendor, was given that 4.8 billion rand contract to do that from, I think it's 2016 to 2017 onwards, where they're going to be upgrading and modernizing Kuburg so that it remains part of the mix. But that's all we have currently uh, in South Africa's uh, mix in terms of nuclear. The plan in terms of the integrated resource plan is to add additional new nuclear capacity. Um, an initial plan was to start introducing that from early 2020s, around 2021, 22. Um, but we know we're near that because, we, as we know, nuclear energy takes a long time or nuclear reactors take a long time to build and we haven't really even started the process of uh, seeking and uh, securing uh, the, the builders of that capacity or the vendors of supplying that technology. And that's why I think there was so much confusion when it was almost put out as a fait accompli in the Rosatom DOE press release. And whoever allowed that press release to go out that, uh, like that, I think there will be some soul searching within the department because I think you know, uh, South Africa uh, has a, a constitutional democracy. Uh, we have processes that we have to follow in terms of public procurement. And I think that nuclear, if we were to circumvent those processes, I think would land up in some sort of legal process um, where people would object. So I think that uh, what, what we saw was maybe a, a error uh, from the DOE in agreeing to the Ross Atom Release. Whether there were political considerations on both sides, uh, we don't know. Whether, uh, but it does raise, did raise a lot of eyebrows and a lot of concern. What is the way forward for South Africa in terms of its nuclear build program? 
Well, I think the very first step is to decide on what we're going to build and when we're going to build it. And I don't think we're really at that point. As I said, that 9,600 megawatts is uh, in the current uh, integrated resource plan, and that is the document, fr uh, that framework that guides all generation coming into South Africa's new mix. So it's the document that guides the Madupi and Kosile build programs. It's the book document that uh, also provides the framework for the renewable energy that's entering the mix and the procurement processes around that. It also provides for the peaking power plants that are being built at the moment. And it also provides for you know new baseload IPP capacity. And nuclear is one component within that. But we also know that that document's out of date. And uh, last year, the, the DOE put out an update to the IRP. And it had a very different take on nuclear to the current IRP version. And that, that uh, uh, really was to, one, to look at whether we can afford nuclear. And there was a sort of threshold limit to how much we should spend on, on per kilowatt. Uh, and uh, that there was a threshold of around 6,500, if I remember correctly, dollars per kilowatt installed. And uh, there, was, uh, there was also a view that we, would, we wouldn't meet the deadlines or the time frames that it sets out in the RP. There's no way, it takes a long, way, long time to build a nuclear power station. There was also a view that maybe we should delay the introduction of nuclear given that there was, is lower demand and given that there are other options entering the, the mix, particularly in the form of gas. That uh, from Mozambique, there's a lot of gas that has been found there. We've already seen some RPP generation, including uh, our own Sassel involved in some of that RPP generation in Mozambique. And then there's the whole potential for shale gas uh, at a later stage, as well as importing liquefied uh, uh, natural gas uh, through different port and using some of that to uh, generate electricity. There's also, we've, we saw the big uh, um, memorandum of understanding and uh, cooperation agreements with the, D the D Democratic Republic of Congo around the Inga project and trying to get that going. And you know, there's also this view that there's a lot more that can be done around RPPs, around con conventional RPPs, coal and others in South Africa. So there was a view that we really need to rejig that document. We really have to have a more realistic document. We also have to put in certain uh, thresholds for nuclear because the big concern about nuclear, I think you know, lot, while many South Africans are concerned about the, wa the safety and the, the waste aspect, actually the biggest thing is the financial engineering around nuclear. Can we afford it? Is it the most, uh, you know, is it the best option? in terms of all the different available options available to South Africa from renewables right through to uh, more coal or the, the really the upscaling of gas, which seems to be a, a big uh, potential that was not really covered in the current RFP version. So until we have that new document or a proper update, you know, I can understand why government continues to talk about the 9,600 megawatts because they say that's the plan, but they've also said that the plan cannot be met. So I think we need to get that update. We need to get it sooner rather than later. We need to have certainty because it's starting to have a knock-on effect onto you know, other programs. You know, we should have had the baseload, baseload procurement uh, program out of the DOE already. We haven't seen those documents yet. There's a lot of interest in that. We've already seen the delay to round three or the renewable program. And you know, we, it's a successful program and it's a lot of um, uh, investment, private investment that's come into South Africa's energy market. 150 billion around that rand. So it's a serious, uh, a lot of money from foreigners that have come into South Africa. And uh, you know, th there's the round four that the bids are already in for round four and we're supposed to be hearing who the preferred bidders are in the next couple of months. So you know, th we need to close these uncertainties around the role of nuclear in the mix, the size of nuclear in the mix. And then we also have to really understand what about these other options around, especially around gas, but also the hydro options that are around, not just from the DRC, but from the region. Mozambique has potential and so does Zambia. So I think until we've done that, um, all this other talk about nuclear is fairly premature, but it looks like government remains committed to nuclear. And, uh, and we'll be entering it in the normal way. I mean, we could have a ministerial decree or presidential decree that allows um, nuclear to move ahead differently from what we're used to. And that is, when we have a public procurement process, it has to be open, transparent, fair, equitable, 
and most important competitive. So you can't go off to Vienna and sign a deal with Russia or Rosatom. You have to go through a process of uh, compet competition where there's rivalry, where people are able to weigh up the pros and cons of the different offering. And besides uh, confusing South Africa, I think that the press statement that came out of uh, Rosatom and DOE, I think also confused the nuclear community because you have major players who have been invested a lot uh, of uh, sweat equity into sustaining their offices in South Africa. These are large organizations. They're from France. They're from uh, Korea. They are from the USA. And they are from China. And the Russians are what, but one uh, rival in this nuclear uh, competition. And I think that hopefully sense will prevail and that if we decide to go with nuclear, we are sensible in terms of costs. And we also know what role it's going to play in the mix, probably to replace the the coal capacity that we're going to be losing from the very mature Eskom fleet. And we also know, need to know that it's not going to be an immediate remedy to South Africa's uh, power shortages. It's something that's going to take a long time, one, to get through the tender process, especially to engineer it in a way that financially we can afford it, and then to build and commission and introduce this stably into South Africa's mix is, is, is many years, if not a decade away. That is the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.